Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alice at Peking University. Here, warmer gradients from Beijing, but everyone should know that Beijing now is not spring, it's winter. Today, we are really heavy snow. Yeah, so outside is heavy snow and the inside is warmer. Yeah, uh, I can ask the talks. So I'm uh, so proud of that we can do the I can ask the talks together and it's such a special day. And so, uh, and this month, we really have a big, 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 you know, uh, platform for uh, the speakers. Yeah, we have already have uh, uh, several speakers get on the stage and deliver wonderful talks in the nanotechnologies for applications. And uh, today we will have a Professor San Wu and next week we will have a Professor Jinping Gong from Japan. So that will be very nice, you know, uh, talks on this stage. So uh, today our platform, uh, uh, IKX is really a strong team. It's a young team, yeah. So I'm Alice Zhang, was from Peking University. I'm uh, so happy to be a moderator. And uh, the speakers today is my best friends, Sam Woo Kim from SKKU Korea. And uh, uh, in SKKU, I have uh, two best friends. One <laughs> is, uh, yeah, Sam Woo, another best lady is, uh, you know, me so Kim. And uh, I can ask, I think many of you already know me. So yeah, because she has a lovely, uh, her lovely smell many, many times. And uh, I have a panelist. Another one is uh, Xiao Sheng Zhang from Sichuan. Uh, another one is Cao Feng Pan from uh, Beijing, B-I-N-N. And our challenger today will be uh, Tian Zhao Bu, uh, Dr. Tian Zhao. Yeah, will uh, be our challenger. So uh, first, uh, let me introduce, oh, sorry, I'm uh, wrong button. Yeah, <laughs> okay. First, uh, let me introduce Professor San Wu. Uh, actually, Professor San Wu is a distinguished professor at the SKKU. I think not only at the SKKU, I should be a distinguished professor on, you know, on South Korea and the whole world. And uh, he's a director of a BK24 SKKU MSE program. And uh, he's uh, serving as a CEO of uh, Energy Mining Corporation in Korea. Uh, Professor Kim is uh, associate editor of Nano Energy and uh, the editor in chief of Journal Science, uh, Sensor Science and Technology. And he is uh, executive board members of Advanced Electronics Material. Uh, he has published the more than uh, 300 research papers and all these are very high, you know, profile papers, uh, index uh, is pretty high. And uh, he also hold more than 100, you know, patents and uh, he delivered more than 100 plenary talks. And uh, he served as a chairman uh, in the uh, NGPT conference in 2018. And he's a director of Samsung SKKU Graphene and the 2D Research Center. He received numbers of a word. If I read all of the word out, will be we use out all the time of today's talk. So I just mentioned a few of that. Uh, Professor Kim was a word of uh, excellent the best researchers in the two, uh, 2018. And uh, he's a top 10 nanotechnology, you know, uh, and, uh, uh, in 2020. And uh, he's a uh, People's uh, Republic of Korea President Award for the Science Excellencies and the Materials Challenges in uh, uh, a lot of native and renewable energy. Uh, all these are so outstanding, you know, uh, word. And uh, Professor uh, Kim is already, you know, prepared his talk. And I think uh, we couldn't wait to listen to this, uh, you know, outstanding talks with triple electrification for biomedic uh, medical applications and the triple tronics. Uh, Sam Wu, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, please. Yeah. Okay. Stage is yours. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for a wonderful introduction, Alice. Uh, and thanks so much again for having me today at this the wonderful ICANN the conference to have a talk. Uh, this is quite uh, the honorable for me. Uh, so before starting uh, today's talk, uh, I have to express my special thanks to uh, all uh, of my group members and collaborators uh, inside, outside SKKU. 
Uh, the all the stuff uh, will be presented uh, today uh, were done by the amazing group and with uh, great supports uh, from all my friends of nano generator communities, uh, Professor Zhongyi Wang and Professor Alice Zhang here, and the Professor Chafong Apan uh, and BINN of Chinese Academy of Science, and the Professor Miso Kim and SKKU, and the Xiao Sheng Zhang uh, Professor at the USAT and STC, uh, who will uh, be joining at the panel discussions uh, just after this talk. Uh, okay, so the, today uh, I'm gonna share with you uh, about uh, our recent TNG research uh, as a new energy solution uh, for the powering uh, body implantable devices, uh, self-powered uh, microboots and uh, disinfection and finally, the 2D material-based tribotronics. Uh, okay, so I'm uh, going to start with uh, the first uh, law of thermodynamics. So this is the uh, energy conservation. Uh, you know, so energy is the ability uh, to work and the work is motion against opposing force. So the conservation of energy means uh, the total energy of an isolated system is unchanged uh, by any process. So as you can see here, the energy is neither created nor destroyed. So it can be transferred uh, from one location uh, to another in the form of mechanical work or heat, as you can see here. All right, so the, you know, the energy exists in the many different forms, uh, for example, the heat, a uh, light electricity. So the, the, this different kind of the energies can be converted into uh, other forms of energies. So, you know, the, when the conversion of energy occurs, uh, the energy conversion efficiencies uh, cannot be the 100%. Uh, similarly, uh, the, the energy is converted, uh, it can be converted into the other kind of energies unintentionally, uh, the energy harvesting, uh, is a type of technologies uh, can convert uh, such sex energies wasted in our nature into usable uh, electrical energy. So the, the, in order to understand uh, energy harvesting, so the, it is necessary to understand the concept of energy and the loss of energies. Uh, that is what I emphasize here. Uh, the with the concept of the first law of thermodynamics, so that we can determine uh, the amount of energy uh, that can be supported uh, through energy harvesting. Uh, for example, the gigawatt and terawatt, uh, such a large power generation is uh, regarded uh, as a sustainable, the energy harvesting. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the energy harvesting for small energy, the microwatt, milliwatt, uh, which would be very useful for the smart energy applications. Uh, for, for example, the smart energy applications. So the one of the promising application of energy harvesting technologies uh, could it be a powering source of uh, wearable devices. The wearable devices market is uh, getting uh, bigger and bigger, uh, but the power supply is the one of the biggest challenges in wearable electronics, in the stretchable electronics. So then what I'm telling you is, so with a proper combination of the energy harvesting and the wireless, the energy transfer technologies, so that we can power uh, the well of devices. That that means that we may realize the wireless self-maintenance and self-powered the well of devices with a new energy solution. So the second one is IoT, the, uh, the Internet of Things uh, is a technological drive uh, can link uh, everything around the world on the internet, uh, such as the shipping objects and the cargo carriers, the even medical devices inside your body. But actually IoT needs a sensor network. So the power for the driving each sensor is small, uh, but the number of the unit uh, can be huge in order to a billions to trillions. So the most conventional technologies is to use a batteries, the, the primary batteries, but the, which may not be the best solution for IoT, though the, uh, with considering the limited lifetime of battery 
and the high maintenance control, uh, the control and cost, and then the environmental issues. So uh, therefore, the making cell power a uh, sensor device is, is very important. Uh, but uh, by the help of the energy harvesting, so and as much as the sensor network consume, that we can realize a cell power uh, sensor networks with maintenance free and the labor cost uh, functions. Uh, they, in order to they utilize the waste uh, mechanical energy, so the, with a tribal electric nano generator uh, or a piezo electric nano generator, so we have to understand uh, the characteristics of the mechanical energy sources coming in. So as you can see, uh, the mechanical energy sources can be classified uh, according to their frequency and uh, magnitude. So for example, the low frequency energy source like the human motion has a high amplitude, the large amplitude. So the, in this case, the, the, in order to increase power output, so we have to have the stack structures. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the, uh, so high frequency energy sources like the, the sound, so which has a low amplitude, so we have to try to find out a regional frequency and the may use a MAMS structure in order to maximize a power alpha. All right, so the, let's just see the friction uh, in between the two materials uh, for energy harvesting. Uh, yeah, we can see the, a lot of frictions in our daily life. Uh, the friction in between the gas molecule and, uh, and phase and the raindrops onto umbrella. So in the rainy day, so which is uh, liquid uh, solid friction, the, which means uh, there is always a friction around us. Uh, so for example, a driving vehicle uh, is subjected to uh, various frictional situations uh, such as mechanical load and the contact separation and sliding and rotating of tires and the vehicle itself. Uh, the width of friction, uh, as you can see, the, we are able to see the, a lot of interesting uh, event happening, such as heat generation and luminescence, the kind of the tribal luminescence, uh, even uh, phase transformation and static electricity generation. Uh, so the tribal electric generation is so based on the, the electron tunneling in between the two surfaces. Okay, a little bit deep inside. Uh, in tribal electrification, so the, in, in other words, so it is called the contact electrification. So we may see uh, three different uh, events uh, during a friction. So first one is the contact electrification uh, by material transfer. The second one uh, is the contact electrification uh, by ion transfer. The, the last one is uh, the contact electrification uh, by electron transfer, the, which is uh, the very interesting uh, physical behavior for myself. Uh, the, the, this kind of the three uh, phenomena occur at the same time in the friction process. So therefore the, it is almost impossible to precisely evaluate each separation. Each contribution is is impo most, uh, almost impossible to separate. So the the, the contribution at the same time, but uh, so th this is very complex situation and complex system. Uh, so, but I'm more interested in the electron transfer uh, among uh, these three of them. So, but but for example, recent paper. Uh, is suggesting that the flux electricity that could, uh, could be the driving force for tribal applications. Uh, but there's still a lot of unknown physics and chemistry uh, should be investigated. So this is quite new. We can see a lot of physics. It's quite interesting. So the tribal electricity, uh, as I told you, is kind of a static electricity that we can see daily lives. Uh, so frequently, uh, such as the thunder lightning, uh, and so static elastic generation, so uh, from uh, wearing and the suit, and the in terms of the mechanisms, so with the, the two different materials, 
the, with the two different material with different work function and the commit to contact. And the, you can see uh, electron tunneling from one side to the other side, the generating uh, charge potential separation onto two the different, uh, different surfaces. So the, uh, we can have a tribal positive material, so which can easily donate free electron to outside and uh, the other side, the, you can have the tribal negative materials the, which can easily accept the free electron from outside. So the when tribal negative and tribal positive uh, at, at the end in this line, the commit to contact, the, we can see a strong uh, tribal potential generation onto the surface. Uh, from the first TNG paper that coming up from Office Jong in Wang's groups, uh, tribal electronic generators is attracting at great attention uh, because of its relatively large power output uh, performance. Uh, and also it has uh, the, a lot of material options the, because the TNG is the, usually the composed of the metal and polymers, as you can see. And also we can have the Good function about the easy tailoring of device structures, low cost, and easy fabrications. And that we can easily fabricate the large area TNG as well. Right, this, uh, this is the concept video. Uh, the TNG can generate uh, electrical energy based on the contact electrification uh, through the surface tunneling, uh, electron tunneling. So you can see the TNG uh, could be used in the powering. Uh, low power consuming devices such as pacemaker, uh, implantable, and sensors and the small electronics. So very useful application it has. So, but this page is showing us the recent uh, the publication of the TNGs, uh, but actually these are not a very recent one. I have to update more, but the, anyway, so a lot of papers uh, are being published. Uh, the TNG seems to be uh, getting a lot of attention uh, worldwide. So as I mentioned uh, in the previous page, the TNG can be made in uh, uh, the various structures and it's easy to control the power conversion efficiency uh, through uh, surface control. And, is, uh, and it's relatively easy to hybridize uh, dice with other energy harvester. Uh, like the solar cell and the fiber-based solar cell and thermal electric in the energy generator. And also the, the, the we can see a new physics, the, for example, the tribotronics. So which is a coupling, a coupling event uh, in between the tribal electric and the electronic properties. So a lot of physics we can enjoy. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so the traditional EMI, uh, Electromagnetic induction, uh, you know, so needs a magnet and coil. So as you can, as you know, so uh, the magnet here, the magnet coming in and out, the the the, the coming in and out inside a coil uh, can the induce a magnetic field as a primary effect, uh, event, and as a secondary event, so we can generate magnetic field. Uh, I'm sorry. So as a secondary effect, we can generate electric field. So the, these two processes uh, can be described with the maxwell faraday equations, as you can see here. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the TNG is based on the Maxwell displacement current, the, which corresponds to the Ampere's law, so, which is a very famous one. So uh, the, actually, the Maxwell displacement current uh, is not an electric current uh, by moving charge, uh, but a time-varying electric field. So the with uh, the, this TNG mechanism, so that we can enjoy the, a lot of physics. Uh, for example, the how to control the surface charge density, and the uh, we can enjoy. It. So how many free electrons they coming in uh, from one side to the other side when touch it, and also the capacitance control of two layers, and the contact frequency and gap distance. So the, a lot of interesting parameters that based on the mechanics and material sciences and circuits we can control. Right, so the, once again, the, in order to secure a high performance TNG, the 
uh, we have to touch uh, these uh, three of them. Uh, the firstly, the materials, and the second one is the structure and the circuit. Uh, so for example, do we have to control work function, uh, surface charge density, uh, trap state uh, by doping something, and you can control the surface morphologies to increase the contact area. Uh, and second, the structure optimizations, uh, as I told you, the frequency amplitude depend on the structure uh, design uh, should be studied, investigated, that depend, uh, for example, the MAMS structures and the stacked device structures. And the third one is the circuit about the circuit. So we have to have a best PMIC, the power management IC, to secure the high conversion efficiency of the TNG. Uh, typically, uh, the external uh, quantum efficiencies of TNG is proportional to Q uh, scaled by Z. Uh, Z is a system impedance uh, by frequency uh, F. But actually, the, uh, I'm belonging to the material science, so the, I'm more dedicating myself to just studying uh, tribal electric materials. So the, as I told you, so I'm very interested in the how to control the surface charge density and, and other the physical parameters so we control the, the charge density, something. Right, so... And now I want to show you a couple of possible TNG applications. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are the mechanical energies uh, wasted in the building. Uh, the easiest things to think of is the human walking and uh, the water uh, or air circulation pipe vibration inside the buildings uh, can also be a big energy source uh, not used for. Uh, what uh, we need to consider is of is the frequency of the uh, energy source. That depending on the frequency, the energy harvesting method uh, should be well selected, as I told you. The this is typical of the power generators, kind of the electrical generator, that is uh, very good for the high frequencies. But on the other hand, the TNG is uh, beneficial for uh, low frequencies. So, so the, therefore, so we come to conclude uh, the TNG is going to be more beneficial uh, than the EMI the, in order to harvest the human walking energy and the piping generation the wasted in our uh, the atmosphere. Uh, the next uh, one is uh, energy source uh, from electric power transmission line. The here we may have two kind of the energy sources, the wasted in the power transmission line. The first one could be a wind vibration. Uh, in case of wind, uh, its frequency is low. The, it means the TNG could be very good to harvest the wind uh, vibration. Uh, but the frequency range is quite wide. So we uh, may have to use a TNG or with a multiple degree of freedom in order to cover the wide frequency range. Uh, the other uh, energy source uh, could be uh, the ultrasound uh, caused by the corona discharging. Uh, the, the power transmission line have the very high voltage. So the corona discharging is happening very commonly frequently uh, into or near the power transmission line. So the, the, when a corona discharging uh, generates, uh, ultrasound uh, comes out nearby. So that's why the piezoelectric effect can be used to measure the ultrasound the coming out and the indicating the possibility of realization of the self-powered the sensor for securing the, the power transmission safety. Uh, and we may use mechanical energies from uh, moving vehicles. Uh, there are various strong vibration on the high speed running train. Uh, the, with a uh, properly designed the TNG based on mechanical energy harvesting technology. Uh, so we may uh, produce the large enough electricity by using the vibration and wind generation when the train is running and passing through the railroad. For example, 
Uh, because the vibration of the rail load also have the wide range, uh, the frequency, the energy can be generated with a multiple degree of freedom TNGs, as I mentioned just before. And that the energy generated from TNG uh, can be used uh, uh, as a power source, uh, the sensor uh, through the PMIC, the, which is a circuit that helps the energy storage efficiency uh, effectively. Uh, the rail load sensors uh, can be detected at the cracks uh, in the rail load and the self powered safety, the sensor application. Uh, but this is another example uh, for the energy harvesting from the moving vehicle. Uh, the mechanical energy sources uh, wasted in vehicle like the, the kinetic energy of vibration and shock uh, absorption and the tire braking uh, can be converted into electricity uh, through the TNG. So the, for example, the, we can power the, a lot of sensors inside an electric car. Uh, and uh, the personally, I anticipate a self uh, self-powered the ADA system uh, coming out to a commercial market in the futures. All right, the next one is the human motion. The human motion itself uh, is also uh, very suitable to be used as energy source for uh, wearable electronic devices. So when energy is generated through the human motion, uh, it can be stored through the PMIC and used for the various purposes. So uh, as you can see here, so the, the emergency uh, energy charging for the SOS calling or missing the child prevention, that this uh, could be a good uh, this, uh, the method uh, to that the complements the limitations of existing the batteries. All right, uh, for recent 10 years, uh, actually I was dedicating myself uh, to tribal electric nanogenerators uh, for powering low power consuming electronics as a new energy solution. Uh, for a couple of example, the, in order to secure the mechanical durability of TNG, uh, we used the shame memory polymer. The, here we use polyurethane. Uh, as you can see, the even once damaged due to the strong friction, uh, but the heat on it, so you can see the perfect recovery of the surface morphologies. Uh, and we reported uh, a textile uh, could be a very nice energy harvesting platform to make self-powered uh, wearable electronics and uh, demonstrated DC power generation uh, from rotating nano generator though with uh, new tribal electric material and device structures. Okay, so the, I was trying to introduce you about the what TNG is and what kind of IT application we can have and from now on, uh, I got to talk about the biomedical application with the TNG. The here is the human lifespan uh, versus the historical year. So as you can see, the average human life, uh, the lifespan uh, being uh, the human being, uh, so has increased dramatically uh, through the industrial revolution and now reached uh, about the 85 years old as of the 21th century. Uh, by the progress of uh, biotechnology in the futures, uh, I expect the human being uh, will experience a quantum jump of the human lifespan again soon. So the, in this point, the, we're gonna anticipate not only living long, uh, but living healthy and happy. So the, for example, uh, the Google, Google is IT company, but Google is working on the 150 and the five year old human lifespan project uh, through Calico, the, which was a spun off the, with the aim of preventing aging and extending human lifespan. The, in order to meet uh, the social demand of, for the health and longevity, the, the convergence of IT and biotechnology has been actively conducted. So as you can see here, like the Neuralink, the spun off uh, from Tesla, the operating uh, by Elon Musk. So the recently uh, the IPS stem cells and third generation genetic seizures technologies 
uh, were awarded a Nobel Prize in 2012 and 2020, and respectively. So that means uh, so many people they anticipate the living long and living healthy. So the 150 year old human lifespan would be achieved uh, through the development of this kind of the biotechnologies. But uh, for beyond 150 year old human lifespan, I believe that we have to have the alternative way. So, you know, uh, you know, so in order to achieve a long human lifespan, uh, it could be very beneficial to develop uh, various human implantable the medical devices to assist and replace biological function in the human body. The actually, uh, the commercial light uh, pacemakers, and so they came out in the 1980s. So you can see the, a, lot of, a lot of medical devices implanted, the commercialized. So as I told you, so we have the, a lot of already commercialized implantable medical devices like the pacemaker, the spinal cord stimulators, the brain stimulators, that these are all commercialized. Uh, but still technical challenges we are facing too is the power energy solution. So the uh, implantable medical devices need periodic surgery to replace the battery every five then 10 years. And periodic surgery uh, causes excessive physical and mental pain to the patient, you know. So, and also the, this, uh, the battery issues and energy solution, the disturbing size reduction. So for example, so here is a photo images of two chamber pacemaker. So as you can see, the primary cell batteries is occupying 78% of its total dimensions. The in order to size reduction, miniaturization. So this is very important for medical devices, implantable medical devices. So do we have to have the second stage, the energy solution? That that means the primary battery should be replaced with uh, secondary batteries in the future. So when it comes to the charging of batteries, the until now, so uh, as I told you, so we could have limited options. So the one could be energy harvesting, uh, the other one uh, could be the wireless power transfers. Uh, but, uh, you know, the no, uh, so the no thermal gradient in our body and no light in our body. So the thermoelectric and photovoltaic would be a uh, not good candidate. Uh, and through the organ mechanical energy harvesting uh, technology like the, the heartbeat and the muscle stretchings, they even you may get some small energy, uh, but uh, it is almost impossible to charge the secondary batteries at this present moment inside implantable devices. The second one is uh, wireless energy transfer technologies. So we have to, but so we have to secure the body safety to overcome the FDA permission hurdle, and uh, figure out uh, each short propagation distance the, in the the human body because uh, the that is the wireless transfer commercialized wireless transfer technology is based on the uh, NFC that this is the, the quite small energies. So the, in this regard, so we came up with a new energy solution, though, which is the ultrasound driven, the TNG. As you know, the ultrasound, uh, which is non-invasive uh, energy source, uh, ultrasound is uh, very safe to human body. So used for the imaging, uh, so in the, the how to say, uh, therapy application, like the imaging uh, some of the organ motion inside the body. Uh, and so the, we can see the program uh, situation, something uh, uh, the, with a uh, safe approach. The, the, this figure showing you uh, our concept. So the safe ultrasound coming in and the vibrate uh, TNT implanted inside the body and generate electricity and charging battery implanted. 
So as you can see here, so the, we can have the, a lot of advantages when we use this ultrasound TNG uh, we are providing. So the, our technologies uh, is uh, very simple, but very effective and powerful. So as you can see the PFA here and kappa here, the ultrasound coming in and then the firstly, the vibrate PFA on the top and makes contact to kappa below and polymer and mala contact the continuously and generating a triboelectric city. So the, this uh, device is very thin and compact. And the backside you can see uh, kind of the, the transformer and same thing battery here and generating power and directly charging the battery here. So the, we characterize the, the harvesting properties uh, in different medium, uh, first in water, uh, TNG performs like this uh, regarding what the, the output voltage and current in water, the output power uh, was around the six milliwatt uh, at the in input intensity of three watt per square centimeter. Uh, because the, uh, our aim is to transmit ultrasound through the tissue. So we started our device uh, in a uh, bovine serum, the body fluid. Uh, the, it turns out uh, that the less performance of the device, the tells us uh, there is much attenuation in bio, uh, biofluid than the water. So which uh, is uh, very accordance with the attenuation coefficient of different mediums. The water is very good, uh, good transmission. Uh, uh, the tissue is good, uh, but the bone is quite bad. So uh, for possible application with this technology, so we have to understand the about ultrasound, the property itself as well. Uh, they, we implanted our TNG uh, inside the rat, uh, firstly, as a small animal-based preclinical test. Uh, and we could generate a power as well. Uh, but as a second step, so we use the porcelain, uh, porcelain tissue. Uh, the porcelain skin, the characteristic is very similar to human skin. Uh, so we, we also implanted our device uh, in the different location inside the porcelain tissues. And the, the, and the study, how they perform like this, that depending on the penetration depths, they show the different power performances. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, the, the turning on the, the ultrasound, that you can see ultrasound coming in and you can see the power generation, the 3D, uh, the TNG inside oscilloscope and the turning off and the no signal coming out, as you can see. Uh, as the same manner, uh, we also implanted our device in a different location inside the beagle uh, body. Uh, that we came to know uh, the power output uh, from TNG inside the living beagle uh, is high enough to charge a battery implanted in the body. Uh, as you can see, the ultrasound coming in uh, with the power of the one water scale centimeter, that you can see the power generation from TNG inside in this oscilloscope the screen as well. So, so the, the summary of TNG, uh, the ultrasound driven TNG uh, for charging secondary battery, uh, for powering implantable medical devices with our, uh, this uh, technology I told you, and the we should secure, as a further work, uh, we should uh, be able to, to secure the acoustic impedance control and um, the long-term stability, and larger power, uh, the density output, and the, we should generate high enough power even deep inside the body, right? Uh, and uh, I wanna move on to the, uh, the second topic, uh, the, which is the time uh, transient uh, TNG inside the human body. Uh, as mentioned uh, in the previous page, so uh, a lot of uh, various uh, implantable medical devices had been, uh, have been uh, commercialized. 
in particular, uh, nerve stimulation market is growing rapidly. So but in terms of the nerve stimulation, then we can have uh, two options. The one is uh, CNS, central nerve system, and the other one is PNS system. Uh, so uh, peripheral nerve uh, system. The in, in the case of the PNS simulations, uh, which may require uh, long-term treatment, the, for example, the Parkinson's disease and the gastrointestinal the, the, the treatment. So this kind of the treatment, so we have to have the long-term therapy. Uh, but so a certain PNS disease, uh, diseases uh, like the depression disorder and the uh, foot drops symptom, they require uh, a short-term treatment uh, through uh, vagus nerve stimulation and the sciatic nerve stimulation that depending on the patient the situation typically less than six months. Uh, for uh, such a short-term nerve stimulation therapy, uh, the research and medical needs is very interested in the securing the time transient uh, medical devices that can uh, be the, the melted and the removed inside the body the, without taking the device out of the body through the surgery. So the, uh, for example, the Professor John Rogers group and Northwestern and, and Professor Zenon Baus group and Stanford are uh, doing very good and publishing the wonderful papers. Uh, but uh, the, because of the different transient time of various material used for uh, the transient uh, medical devices and the complexity of devices and circuit that required for uh, power supply because the, they used NFC transmission. So unfortunately, it has been impossible to develop a technology can removed inside in the body immediately at a desired time. So the, this is movie file uh, video. So as I mentioned, so the uh, we uh, a lot of uh, implantable devices commercialized. So uh, for example, the PNS stimulations, so the vagus nerve stimulation and satin nerve stimulation uh, are very useful for de depression and foot drop something. So, and so as I told you, so we had a bit limited uh, the energy solutions. So, but the with the current technologies, the temperature increase and the short transmission distance and body safety, uh, we have to worry about a lot of things. This is ultrasound and our device. So as I mentioned, the ultrasound coming in and the vibrate a polymer layer. And the polymer layer here, so we used a PFA here and metal and the come into contact and vibrate continuously and generating the electric signal and charge battery. So but actually this is the, a, a, the prototype, the device in this is the in vitro uh, uh, test. So you see the power output through the oscilloscope. Uh, but as I mentioned, the short-term therapy. So we have to have, so the time, the transient function, uh, but it's very tough to control the, the in-body lifespan. So because of the, they use the antenna and a lot of circuit and transistor to of, as a, the power solution. So, but in our case, the after treatment, so the with focused uh, ultrasound or ultrasound with high intensity, so the, the we can uh, fully remove uh, the our devices inside the body. So here's the example. So the, this is about a fully uh, biodegradable and implantable TNG. Uh, the it is called uh, FBI TNG anyway. <laughs> Uh, that this FBI TNG uh, was designed to uh, generate the stable electrical output at low intensity ultrasound. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the high intensity ultrasound coming in, so the initiate uh, the transient process. So therefore, the after clinical purpose of FBI TNG, so we can easily dissolve the device inside the body using high intensity ultrasound coming in. 
the the encapsulation layer was made of uh, PHBV uh, by the other polymer uh, has low transient rate. Uh, the tribal elastic layer, so they designed to improve uh, tribal elastic offer performance uh, by adding PG the content. So PHBB is a stable encapsulation layer, and the PG doped PHBB is tribal elastic layer to enhance power offer. Uh, to investigate each, uh, the energy generating performance, so we measured electric output. So under the water and the percentage with a uh, low intensity ultrasound. The sine wave of the electrical output so implies that the incident ultrasound energy uh, vibrate uh, the PHBV and PEG triboelectric layer to generate a triboelectric city. Uh, so we perform uh, the FEM simulation to identify the role of PHBV encapsulation layer uh, in uh, to decide the device lifetime, uh, the based on FEM simulation, uh, the the when the ultrasound the uh, ultrasound comes in, the acoustic pressure is the focused on the forest structure of the PHBB polymer, and the acoustic pressure in the pore uh, can be enhanced with the higher intensity of ultrasound. So when it reaches a certain level, uh, this PHBB polymer will no longer hold its own structure, will uh, mechanically uh, disintegrate it. So with this mechanical disintegration, the enlarged the surface of PHBB polymer that makes a molecular level degradation faster. Uh, but we, meanwhile, so PHBB triboelectric, uh, PG, the triboelectric layers, and the magnesium electrode becomes degrade, uh, degraded fast, uh, faster than when uh, they meet uh, the permeated the water due to their high rate uh, transient rate. So we performed uh, the ex vivo and in vivo experiment. Uh, experiment. Uh, the first we inserted the TNG uh, under the skin of layer, the portion tissue as an in vitro test. The when the low intensity ultrasound applied, the device generated uh, the stable output performance for one hour. Then the, we have the increase the ultrasound intensity up to three point uh, uh, the three watt uh, for square centimeter. The electrical output started uh, to be degraded. Uh, the after forty minutes uh, from the application of the high intensity ultrasound. Uh, we see the PHBB encapsulation was degraded enough to generate the only uh, trivial output performance, like this. Uh, the, when uh, the, uh, we apply the low intensity ultrasound and the implantable, uh, implanted site, uh, like the uh, in vivo test, uh, the, the device uh, the, uh, the produced a stable power output again. Uh, so as you can see that this, uh, according to the in vitro in vivo test, so we believe that this ultrasound mediated TNG is a wonderful, the energy solution for the powering transient uh, electronics. Okay, so the, this is about the uh, motion driven TNGs. So about the separately chargeable uh, cardiac pacemaker system with the TNG. The human walking uh, has, uh, typically has a, the vertical displacement of six centimeter. Uh, in this work, the main concept is to harvest electricity and charging battery inside the pacemaker the, with the motion driven TNG. Uh, we made the TNG uh, with the Armin treated PVA. So as a tribal positive layer uh, and the PFA as a tribal negative layers. The working mechanism of the TNG with the press standing unit, uh, the uh, proof of mass inside and the contact it up and down uh, while walking and keep generating tribal electric power up with the kinetic motion. So here is a, a photograph of stack the TNG, I'm sorry, the TNG and the commercial uh, coin cell battery uh, as a size comparison, uh, the scale by is one centimeter. So here is photographs of the front, the back side, the power management system. So the five layer stacked TNG uh, here. 
So the uh, here are the voltage output and current output of the one to five stack T engines. So the, here are the charging behaviors of the first and second uh, caps uh, uh, and the PMIC uh, and the batteries, secondary batteries uh, stack uh, the, the, the battery by the stack the T engines. So it could, uh, the performance uh, demonstrated. Uh, for in vivo evaluation, so the of the TNG is a large animal preclinical test. We implanted a pacemaker with our TNG uh, under the subcutaneous fat of mongrel model, so which is beagle. Uh, this is about the real time energy harvesting. So the, with motion, the the energy comes out, but no motion, and no power comes out. So the, this is the uh, self-rechargeable cardiac pacemaker. The, here is a photographs of front and back side the, of the integrated system. Uh, the, this is a functional block diagrams of self-rechargeable cardiac pacemaker. So the atrial and ventricle lead wires to sense EGM signal and the pace the ventricle the when bradycardia occurs and the TNG harvests the energy and charges the battery inside the pacemaker. The, in order to demonstrate the pace, uh, pacing performances of self power and self rechargeable the cardiac pacemaker, the, we measured the electrocardiogram, the atrial EGM, EGM and ventricle EGM data of the mongrel uh, in a normal condition and uh, abnormal condition by causing bradycardia with uh, vagus nerve stimulation. Uh, the, this is the ventricle EGM signal uh, in normal condition, and the, this is a ventricle EGM signals in a simulated abnormal condition. So as you can see, so the demonstrating uh, the successful the operation of the pacemaker, the powered by the motion-driven TNG developed in this work. Right, so the, this is about the uh, the the manipulation of microbes like the bacteria and viruses. So tribal electrification induced the cell powered the microbial disinfection using nanowire enhanced the localized electric field. So, but this is the uh, resonance vibration driven microbes infection system uh, for air transmitted the microbes. Uh, but this is the schematic uh, of the cell powered the disinfection system in a uh, air duct, the air circulation system. So it is composed of TNG here. Uh, so in air circulation, so the, the vibration always happening, the happens. So the, that's why the with vibration, we can generate power. And so the by the half of the uh, power management system with rectifier, so the, and the, uh, we can have uh, three elect electrode uh, disinfection filters uh, for air transmitted uh, microbial disinfections. Uh, so, for example, this is the uh, the first electrode. This is the second electrode. They connect the negative charge and positive charge. So the air comes in uh, with microbus, and the microbus is charging negatively uh, by the help of the negative charge that's supported by the TNG, and the the microbus comes negative, becomes negative uh, when flowing through the, the negative electrode. And after the charged microbus uh, flow the, between the positive and ground electrode and are trapped onto the positive uh, electrode surface uh, by electrostatic attraction. Uh, but the, this surface is not flat. So we uh, synthesize the na conductive nanowire onto the electrode. So the, the finally, uh, the microbus are in uh, the, the inactivated and killed by the localized electric field uh, from the, the tip of the kappa phosphate, the conductive nanowire uh, by electroporations and the damage to the, the bacteria and virus skin and the body fluid comes out and kill. So this is the power generated performance uh, time limitation I wanna skip. Uh, and the, these are the disinfection efficiencies for E. coli and B. subtilis and bacteria and uh, MS2 viruses. Uh, the width without the TNG uh, power, the, you can see a dramatic difference on uh, disinfection efficiency. Uh, after TNG operation, the electroporated uh, uh, pores uh, were clearly generated 
onto damaged membrane, the E. coli, and the subcellular bacteria and M. spiders, as you can see here. So the damaged here and damaged here and damaged here. So the, as I told you, the body, the fluid comes out and kill. This is quite a simple process and very effective. Uh, that this is the last one uh, about the tribotronics. So what is tribotronics? The, okay, so the 2D materials, uh, this is very good platform to demonstrate uh, tribotronics. And the, for example, if you bark, if you have bark, if you rub bark surface, uh, you can have the, the you can uh, only have the surface limited modification. Uh, but the 2D material is monolayer, it will be monolayer, it's a super sensitive to uh, the tribal electric stimulation. So for example, uh, the graphene. The graphene uh, is n bipolar, uh, the materials, so peak conductive and conductive, that depending on the situation. The, for example, rubbing uh, the graphene with nylon, so you can make the graphene the N type. And the rubbing uh, graphene with the teflon, so you can make the graphene P type. So just rubbing with different materials, so you can make a PN junctions. Uh, very useful for the PN junction applications uh, as a new uh, the uh, physics. Uh, to demonstrate uh, this tribotronic concept, so we were trying to demonstrate the tribotronic touch sensors. Uh, graphene channel here, the electrode here, so the ion gel is uh, dielectric. So to secure a proper contact with the hand, so we used extended gate. So the commit contact with the hand so in between two material, the tribal application generated. So this potential induce the uh, charge separation, the uh, inside uh, the ion gel as well. And finally, uh, the forming level of uh, graphene is changed. So the doping, the process. So with this concept, so we could uh, obtain the ultra sensitive properties uh, with a detection limit uh, in the subtle pressure, the less than one kPascal, and uh, very fast uh, with the response time, the less than uh, 30 millisecond. So which is very useful for the electronic skin and cell power, the artificial intelligence system. Right, uh, and also uh, with the graphene, but actually the graphene is conductive, but uh, before rubbing after rubbing, so as you can see, uh, clear uh, the pot potential change you can see, uh, this is quite weird and interesting. The even over the 12 hours, uh, this charge accumulation is uh, stable. So what happened? So, but anyway, so, but, but time limitation, I, I wanna skip details. So, but, uh, so depending on the selection of the substrate material, so conductive substrate and insulating substrate like the silicon oxide, the silicon oxide and mica substrate are very good to charge trap the in between the graphene and substrate. But anyway, the rubbing graphene, so you can make anti-doping and p-type doping. So with uh, your proper level, so you can make a PN junction, just rubbing and tribal electrification. And also uh, this is the last page. So we were trying to understand uh, the final, the tribal electric, uh, the positions of 2D layered material like the uh, transient metal dye, calcogenite, like the molybdenum disulfide, the tungsten selenide, the a lot of 2D materials we have. So the based on the DFT simulation and the actual experiment, so we could know the exact position of individual tribal electric uh, 2D materials. As you can see, that that means the every 2D material has a very good uh, tribal electric properties. That. All right, so as a summary, so I was trying to understand you, the one is tribal electric and nano generators and the what kind of application we can have. And also actually the, the material study is all about the TNGs, I can tell. So the, uh, the develop a new material is quite important. Uh, and also the, uh, the TNG for uh, body implantable and biomedical applications and, and even short, and of, uh, in the last part, I was trying to understand you, the wise 2D tribotronics. Okay, so here is all of my groups, uh, members and uh, collaborators inside outside SKKU. Uh, due to time limita uh, limitations, uh, I'm not able to mention all of them, but I have to say 
the countless uh, amazing ride with our members and friends and collaborators. I'm so grateful for all of them and all done uh, by this amazing group. And I'm very privileged to be part of this group. And yeah, and okay, well, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Yeah, very great. Yeah, that's a Wu. I love that F B I T N G, right? You know, living longer, healthy, and uh, happy <laughs> with F B I T N G. I think that's a genius, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, design. Okay, really. Okay, great. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, now let's uh, invite our panelist and our ex challenger here, uh, Foster Miso Kim, uh, my great friend. Yeah, yeah, SKKU too. Uh, she is one of the best material scientists, you know, uh, not only in Korea, I think Asia or in the whole world. It's the most beautiful, you know, female young scientist. Yeah, appra mm -hmm. uh, appreciate and uh, are proud of him because Miso uh, helped me a lot. Uh, I can ask the talks. And uh, Miso also, yeah, done wonderful job be our rising stars. Yeah, so that's really, really great. Welcome Miso. And uh, welcome, uh, Xiao Sheng Zhang. Actually, Xiao Sheng now is a famous young professor, you know, in uh, in China, right? Xiao Sheng, I couldn't you already shining all over the uh, Asia, but shining in China, really. Yeah, she uh, done a lot of work in uh, TNG and also uh, very great and uh, this field. And now he is leading a big group in Chengdu, uh, UESTC. Uh, then Xiao Sheng, you can introduce your group later. Yeah. So welcome, Xiao Sheng. And uh, our another panelist is uh, Cao Feng Pan. Yeah, Cao Feng, I think many people already read uh, you know, his paper because he published many, many papers. <laughs> and uh, all these papers in the high impact journals. So uh, in my group, almost every week, you know, we have a new publication list. Yeah, we saw Cao Feng's uh, name often. Uh, Cao Feng done a lot of nice work, not only in TENG, also for the triple electric, uh, you know, tripletronics, and uh, you may read about, you know, his papers for this kind of nice pattern. Uh, so welcome, Cao Feng, uh, from Beijing. Yeah, from Beijing. And uh, uh, welcome our challengers, uh, Tian Zhao, and now he's a doctor. So last year, he's a, a PhD candidate. <laughs> was, yeah, uh, that very good, you know, in our competition. Now this year, he already graduated, got his PhD, and now he's a postdoc. Yeah, so Tian Zhao, welcome. And uh, now let's take all of them get on the stage. Uh, and I'm thinking we start as Euro. Uh, so Tian Zhao, yeah, please. Uh, hello, Professor John. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Kim. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your great talk. Uh, I'm very interested in the tribotronics part that you have shown the tribotronic devices that could be used for the information sensing uh, by the current signal. However, we know that this, this property could also be achieved by the voltage signal of the TNG. So, uh, I, compared with the TNG, I want to know what the advantage uh, when tribotronics using for the information sensing. Yeah, right. So wonderful question. So the uh, for possible application uh, to the tribotronics. So, but but actually, the in terms of application, so the, we have the long way to go. So, but the in terms of physics, so the two D platform is very good. Uh, to see the new physics, because as I told you, it's very sensitive to uh, the outer stimulations and the, the, the stimulation change. So but because of the same film and Berkeley material is less sensitive to stimulation and touch something, uh, but the 2D material is very, very super sensitive, so as I told you. So the, that's why, so even soft touch and hard touch. And uh, for example, if you touch, uh, the surface, so the we may see uh, not only uh, the tribal uh, tribal identification, but also strain gradient, something, right? Okay. So which okay. uh, quite related to the flux electricity. So it's quite interesting, uh, but a very complex system. So the, that's why. So it's very early stage, I can tell. So but so we can have the a lot of looms 
that we can study. So we can study and we can develop new physics. So that's why, uh, yeah, right. So you are right, uh, but, but in terms of application, commercial application, uh, but at this present stage, so the, yeah, I'm a little bit uh, dedicating myself to the fundamental study uh, for the tribotronics with the 2D material platform. So, so you mean you mean that uh, the uh, the tribotronics is developing towards the two D materials? Uh, could it be or one option? Uh, but uh, but for example, the two D materials. So we have to we have a lot of challenges. So how to make a pick, and how to secure uh, the long term stability? So because the two D materials are super sensitive. The diamond is the uh, less durability, <laughs> so okay. in other words. So actually a long way to go, <laughs> long okay. way to go for commercializations. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And I also have a question about the self-powered microsystems by the TNG. Mm. And we, we know that the TNG has a, has a very high voltage and low current, and the internal resistance is very large. Yes. So uh, it will be an impedance mismatch yeah. when TNG powers the electronic devices. Yeah. And this, this has limited the applications of TNG. Yes. So how, how to solve this problem? And what, what is the largest efficiency can be reached? Yeah, you are right. Uh, so the, that's why so, uh, we developed the new technologies, ultrasound-driven TNGs. Uh, so actually the ultrasound the TNGs, uh, TNGs act as a kind of receiver the, instead of the energy harvester. So the... As a first part, so I emphasize the energy conservation, the first law of thermodynamics. So that's why uh, our mechanical energies are very small energies. So the, even with uh, very high conversion efficiencies, uh, it's very tough to get uh, the large enough the power to charge lithium-ion battery, lithium batteries uh, with current technologies. So that is due to the uh, the the large impedance, uh, the behavior of the, the TNG itself. Uh, so that's why, so at this present moment in our group, we have the two application. The one is uh, the ultrasound driven something. So the acting as uh, the energy receiver. The, the other one is the, uh, like the microbus uh, uh, manipulation. So in this case, we don't need to charge batteries. Uh, just with the tribe potential that we can control something. So it did these two kind of uh, technologies. But actually, uh, the fundamentally, the, we have to have the new materials. So to generate the DC power. Uh, the, recently, uh, first Zhongli Wang's group so, and, the, and our communities, so many colleagues uh, are reporting the DC power generations. So, and the, uh, the with a semiconducting tribal electric materials. So, but even, so how to say, the peak to peak a power uh, could be small, uh, but DC power generations uh, could give us uh, the very large RMS power, uh, the more than the, the peak to peak power. So based on the AC, the power generation. So the, I think uh, it is good time to develop the new first new mechanisms uh, with the new materials to increase power output. So, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. How about I'm not sure if this is not okay. good how answer. about the efficiency when we charging the battery? Uh, actually I, it's very tough to tell you <laughs> because okay. so the we have no standard. So the this is quite a weak point for us. So but uh, we are working hard, uh, and the nowadays, uh, the a lot of people globally, so the pushing to, uh, and the and uh, the joining our communities and. All right, so I think we need more time, <laughs> but okay. I'm yes, still positive. For sure. Yeah, still positive. I think when you ask you know Tesla, or you, when you ask you know Edison that time how how many power you can produce, how about yes. the efficiency? That's also a top uh, question for them hundred years ago, right? Yeah, but yeah, now right. it's yeah, it's very good. 
But yeah. when you talk about you know new materials, I think that's really a good opportunity and uh, for everyone to put the new materials you know into this field and the new yeah. mechanics. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Miso, you are you know material scientist, right? Yeah. <laughs> so do, uh, yeah. you mute, same department. Miso? Yeah, Miso, you mute. Yeah. Uh, did you have any questions for this or any suggestions how to put the new materials? Yeah. Oh, I was about to ask the mechanical aspect, not the material aspect. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, yes. sure. So I, yes. Okay, so um, before I ask any question, I have to tell uh, everybody that like I've I've known someone like for 10 years now, and I've seen like a number a number of his talks like for the past 10 years and every time i listen to his talk he's growing up again and again into a big <laughs> hero so every time i got inspired and then it's amazing because i'm gonna listen to his talk like next month again with the keynote speak is uh, like a, a speaker invitation and then i'm very looking forward to it again so i'm pushing him <laughs> 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 to make another slide for me <laughs> so. Okay, so my question is, so since um, I think we have the same problem in vibration energy harvesting as well, uh, the broadband like operation. So since we are targeting some specific design to operate under specific uh, like a frequency, single frequency or the within a narrow, like a range of frequencies, operating frequencies. And then we've been working on piezoelectric vibration energy harvesting for broadband operations. But like for tribal, like, uh, like a TNG, I was wondering how you could approach those uh, like a broadband operation, like any design or any tuning uh, method, like electrically or anything. Would you yeah, like yeah, I appreciate it. The wonderful questions, uh, but uh, but very top questions. <laughs> I know. Very top answer. Oh, very yeah. challenging. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, for uh, for piezoelectric. Uh, material so the we can have the cantilever type so a very good structure for uh, the vibration so and damping something uh, but tribal electrification so we are uh, the, the based on the uh, how to say the contact electrification the contact so the, that's why so we have no lots of uh, very limited options uh, to the get a proper structure so as I mentioned in my presentation, so we were trying to stack uh, our devices uh, with the different, the spring, mm -hmm. so in, the, in between, mm -hmm. uh, but still bulky. So the, for example, with the 3D printing, so we may get uh, more smaller devices, the stack, the vertically stacked one. And if we can, uh, make a very tiny spring uh, based on the polymer material uh, like the uh, PVDF and the other polymer or something and the, we make a the you may have some the how to say the broadband the frequency uh, energy harvesting something uh, but the theoretically and the, the based on the fundamentals of TNGs so I think it is a little bit quite a tough to get yes, a good, still in yes. the vibration energy harvesting or the piezoelectric energy harvesting, it's uh, still a very big challenge in tuning the broadband operation. Yes. yes. And I, I think so, we can combine together, right? Yeah. Hybridize. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. And Thank you. I have one more question about the ultrasound driven TNG. So um, it's a gr very great idea to apply the ultrasound onto the human body, and then we can have like a a transient materials, but um, is would there be any damage or detrimental effect on human body by applying the ultrasound when you use those devices? Yeah, so that that is very a very very important point. But actually, uh, the but as I told you, so ultrasound is a safe, safe. Uh, but so the but so the we have to uh. The secure the the the, uh, the ultrasound range uh, for the F, uh, FDA permission. So, for mm -hmm. example, uh, less than the one uh, one hundred kilohertz. So, 
the, for example, the, the 20 kilohertz, so may induce the large amplitude and also the, the cavitation inside blood. Mm -hmm. So that may increase the body temperature. Uh, so, but, so the ultrasound the TNG, so there could be the one of the very safe way and effective way they provide the energy to implantable devices. So we are tuning, we are trying to tune uh, our, the frequency input uh, from the, uh, a, a couple of, a few tens of a kilohertz to the megahertz range. So actually the uh, 1386 megahertz is uh, quite safe, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, ultrasound range. So, but the in this, uh, the ultrasound range, the uh, displacement uh, of TNG is quite small. And so the, that's why the power output becomes small. So that is the trade-off. So the, that's why we have to change our structures. So uh, based on our, this presentation, so we just introduced and contact and separation uh, device mode. Uh, but so for the megahertz uh, range, so we have to change our structures. Uh, I think we might... Yeah, I think we, we need the, to collaborate on this uh, uh, subject so yes. that we can find a way to focus the ultrasound together yeah. using yeah. metamaterials. Yeah, that's why I need your help. So. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you're a specialist. It's my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. <laughs> so how nice to know this, you know, in the same material science, you know, school. So yeah, you can collaborate with each other. Actually, yeah. uh, me, so you're exactly right. Before you jump in, I saw <laughs> Sam Wu's slides. I see the same thing. I see yeah. Sam Wu. I saw a totally different presentation. You know? Every time, I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, Sam, you always not growing, it's jumping. You know, oh, appreciate jumping it. higher, higher, higher. Yeah, so that's really, uh, really great. I see, you know, we will ask you tough questions that make, uh, really make sense. Now, let me understand why, you know, as KKU, the material science is so strong. Because colleagues, <laughs> yeah, colleagues was very strong and challenging each other, so yeah. they couldn't stop, you know. <laughs> so Sam Wu, now Miso give you another pressure is you know next month, yeah, a new talk, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? A new talk, yeah. Yeah, I will check on his slides again, and I will let you know. Uh, <laughs> maybe same. <laughs> <laughs> Just one month in total. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, see uh Xiao Sheng, yeah. So uh did you have a question? Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 of course. Uh, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I hope that there's no limitation about the QA <laughs> section. <laughs> no cap, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. so uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor yep. Kim, uh, for this very exciting, excellent talk. Um, I guess this is already a wonderful uh, evening to enjoy this uh, wonderful I can X talk. Um, so um, your group conducted so many uh, innovative the research activities. And again, so uh, plenty of uh, scientific merits. It's very, very interesting. So a lot of different prototypes of micro nano energy harvesters with a high performance have been developed in your group. And, uh, and in the meantime, you also uh, demonstrated uh, a great many applications, in different fields such as variable electronics, the medical uh, health monitoring, and also the powering sensor and actuators to form the cell powered uh, device and system. So I just wonder, because when we talk about um, the, 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 the medical, the health, some devices, you, we, we always compare the wearable and implantable, you know? <laughs> so could you please just comment about the implantable micro nano energy harvesters? Is it worth to carry on such research activities like we, we uh, to, um, how to say, to fabricate some device uh, the, the nanogenerators and men of uh, the biodegradable materials. Uh, can you just compare some, can you see some advantages if we uh, realize this kind of the devices and uh, what is the disadvantages and what is the biggest challenges? But I, I, I think that I still believe that for the implantable, the, the biomedical devices is still very, very interesting research topic. So what is our comments? Yeah, right. So the wonderful questions. Okay, 
So actually, uh, implantable devices. The, actually, I expect so the the more and more so a lot of wearable devices will come inside body. So, but uh, for implantable medical applications, so the, we have a couple of the technical holders. So what what the the best one is the uh, energy solution, uh, because as I mentioned, so the most of uh, body implantable devices. Uh, are being operated uh, by the primary batteries. So th that's why the size is quite big. And the big mean is the, uh, we implant uh, the power generators in somewhere, uh, but power away from the heart or something. And so the device should be wired. And mm -hmm. so the, lead, uh, the, the, the read, read wire something. And so wire is quite long. And also uh, the, after a long time uh, operation, long operation. So we may see kind of the uh, infection, something. And also they keep operating in the, 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 uh, the medical devices the, as time goes by. And we may uh, uh, worry about some the damage to the lead line and some the mechanical damage something. And we have to replace. So the every uh, dev device implanted. So to prevent from uh, the, this, uh, the challenges, so we have to implant, uh, make implantable device as small as possible, right? So if you have yes. a tiny one that you can directly uh, attach the, your medical devices to uh, that is pinpoint the treatment. So, and the damaged area, they like, so for example, vagus nerve stimulation. So this nerve is quite a small. So the, that's why the, well, for example, power generated here and base knob here. So we have to have the, the, the wires, to, uh, the long way to go. So the, uh, and in order to uh, they figure out that this problem. So uh, for example, the John Rogers group, so the Xenon Box group, they are trying to, to get NFC uh, wireless transfer. So, but in terms of uh, NFC wireless transfer, so to get uh, the better power, so we have to have uh, the, the larger, the antenna inside the body, right? So the power yes. depends on the size of antenna the inside the body. Of course. So, but, yeah. so that means the, to get the larger power, do we have to get the larger devices? So it's quite a trade-off. So, and also the, in order to the, the charge batteries, the this power is not enough. To charge batteries. Okay, so the, this is uh, for the charging battery issues. But the other one is, uh, for example, the nerve stimulation, do you don't need to have the battery inside? So for example, uh, if I wanted to the, the stimulate a nerve, and then so we can implant a tiny device uh, to a certain point in nerve, and the ultrasound illumination and ultrasound comes in and we can stimulate the nerve at the same time. So the, depending on the desired time that we can stimulate the nerve and then, so just one time or the one time uh, in, a, in a week. So that's enough. So the, we don't need to have the battery inside. So the, with this technology, so the, we can have two advantages. So we can make device size small. And the other one is, Eventually, the, we can remove the battery support as a new energy solution. So, but the this uh, actually uh, the technologies of all the the medical devices, implantable medical devices, is the a lot of studies have been done, and, but the one of the critical the problem is the energy solution. So yes. the, the lack of the energy solution, so. Yeah, right. As I told you, so so we are facing to the a lot of the uh, the technical challenges. Uh, and, and, and I can tell you is the size reduction is most important to make a size reduction. So we have to have energy solution, new energy solution. So that is the, the quite a simple answer, right? From my okay. Side. Thank you so much. This is it's, it's very exciting research field actually because personally I also in my group we also try to. Um, to carry on the research uh, activities about this implantable, the, the micro nano energy harvesters. 
And then we also try to uh, integrate uh, this kind of the, the knowledge generators with some uh, other the functional devices to form the all in one, the smart yeah. microsystems, and which can be implantable completely implanted into the human bodies. But as you say, uh, there's many, many uh, very difficult challenges actually from materials and to uh, the, the connection, the integration of the different the functional devices is a lot of. So just a, a very a short question. So um, my, the, the second question is, can you just uh, comment uh, the electric generator and the triple electric generator? <laughs> I get this question is a little bit uh, sharp because when you uh, do some research about the triple H generators, uh, when you uh, prepare the wear the papers and send it to the review, the peer review, and then some of them, they may be asked that, what is the difference between them, the main difference? And it's also challenges that, um, because you know that for the electric generator, uh, people claim that there's no friction. So they claim that mm, the energy conversion efficiency may be higher, uh, mm. but for the triple H generator, actually uh, there's also some uh, the very unique properties and yeah. advantages. So can you just give comments when we have these questions, how we can just uh, to defense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's quite complicated. <laughs> so to tell you, <laughs> so because uh, uh, the Zhongmin's tells uh, electric is tribal electric is same each other. Uh, but so the technically, the so tribal electric uh, generation is based on the contact and separation. Electric is uh, the capacitance change. So with the precharged ion onto the surface. Uh, and also the uh, different history. So the first uh, electorate uh, came out from the Japanese group. And also yes. and one of the leading group in the world and uh, is, is belonging to the Tokyo University. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and with the different materials uh, like the side top something. So the very high K materials. So uh, can hire so a lot of charge inside, uh, but uh, the tribal electrics uh, can have uh, good advantages as compared to the electric. So we don't need to pre-charge uh, the ion to the surface. And also the uh, surface charge uh, lifetime. So like, for, for example, the charging the side top surface. Uh, so uh, the, based on the paper, so they uh, charging uh, can maintain up to uh, 100,000 hours something in the base on the paper. Uh, but so it's very sensitive to humidity and some the other contamination, something. Uh, right. So, but in terms of commercialization, the electric is commercialized for the microphone, mm -hmm. you know, so, but uh, so I think, so the electric is kind of the uh, tribal electric generator. So, in other words, I can say <laughs> the tribal electric like generator is kind of the <laughs> electrodes. So, yeah, right. So that that is the the my simple answer I can tell you right now. Okay. Yeah, I saw okay. Taofeng there. You. Thanks for Taofeng waiting for such a long time, and I uh, see so you maybe have good uh, you know answers for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please, did you have uh, some uh, comments on this? Yeah. Okay. Hi. So, uh, yeah, long time long time say, yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very good. Excellent talk. Yeah, I learned a lot during the last uh, one hour talk. Yeah, I have maybe one or two <laughs> questions. Uh, the first one is, you know, if we, we want to have some application for this ultrasound TNG, if we put it on the surface of our heart, mm. and and when you give in the ultrasound, you know, it's not, it's not uh, maybe a not. A, contact direct contact because yeah. you know for our chest it's muscle yeah. skin muscle and then air yeah. so when this works you know in your de in your demonstration is is the tng will put in the meat and then apply the ultrasound mm -hmm. and hopefully if there is a gap between the mm -hmm. ultrasound and the meat mm -hmm. this, is, this is the case yeah yeah right actually uh implantable devices uh should be packaged uh, with the titanium alloy. So but actually in the paper, so the kind of the demonstrations and the, we reported the feasibility. 
Yeah. So, but we are trying to uh, the uh, the generating uh, power generating from the fully fully packaged uh, the devices. Yeah, uh, but the ultrasound is a very good candidate because the ultrasound can transmit the titanium package. Is that is quite powerful. Uh, but the NFC and the other uh, the wireless energy transfer technologies, the radio frequency cannot transmit through the titanium package. So this is quite critical challenge, technical challenges. So the, that's why the many people are interested in our technology recently. Yeah, it's a very nice story. Yeah. yeah. And the, the second question may be about your tribotronics <laughs> devices. Yeah, for yeah. Uh, 2D materials uh, to build this uh, uh, tribal electronic devices, if we make a single point touch, two points touch, or multi point touch, yeah. and uh, with same touch area, <laughs> yeah. with same touch area, can we yeah. distinguish these three modes? Uh, yeah, right. So same this... touch area means same touch uh, uh, cube, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> right. So the wonderful questions. Uh, for touch sense application with graphene, so yeah, 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 I have to say, I tell you, so yeah, I can uh, confirm the 100% because we pushed with the hand. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as a fundamental study, so we studied uh, graphene tribal notifications. The in that case, we used AFM tip yeah. uh, and precisely controlled contact area. So the, but but depending on some the kind of the paper, so I'll just say, okay. yeah, so we can control the precisely. And so, but in terms of application, so yeah, we may have a rough approach, uh, but how to say, right. So, but anyway, for example, if you push with the APM tip, a tip APM tip is quite sharp. Yeah. Uh, so the, in this case, a uh, very complicated situation. So as I told you, not only the touch, but also string gradients happen. So it is very tough to separate uh, in between uh, the, well, for example, flexoelectricity and tribal electricity. Uh, and also, yeah, yeah a, a lot of surface charges comes in, uh, coming in. So very complicated is uh, the system. So uh right so long way to go so we have room to do work <laughs> we, yeah, we have yeah. chances okay. yeah whenever i publish papers so um, i still i'm still hesitating uh the publish paper so uh, because the a lot of uh unclear and the weird uh the event the included so but uh this is our duty <laughs> okay so <laughs> figure it out yeah yes thank think. you Kim. yeah yeah, uh, so same way, yeah, uh, as a time fly, but I, I must use my uh, advantage to be moderator, ask you two questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is it like, you know, use uh, ultrasound, you know, uh, for the implantable sensors? Yeah, it's like to kill a, a call in another side of the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from this side. So then uh, I, my question is for the ultrasound used is, uh, uh, the frequency and the intensity. So there hmm. must be some limitations, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So how do you take this balance or trade off? Can you yeah, right. So that's a good, uh, wonderful question. So actually, uh, we have uh, FDA uh, limitation uh, to get FDA permission. So the ultrasound input should be less than three watt per square centimeter. But uh, this is proof of power. Uh, but so the actually proof of power and the and the ultrasound power at the surface interface is different. So actually less than uh, the power at the interface, the less than the proof of power. So that, that is due to attenuations. So the depending on the distance exponentially, the input power degraded. Uh, so, uh, so in our paper, so we uh, typically use the one watt uh, square centimeter power, input power. So that's due to the body safety. Okay, 
Yeah, so I have a second question is for the uh, nerve uh, stimulation. So yeah. I, I think that one is really, really great because I'm a Chinese, you know. Yeah, Ukraine, both of us uh, know Chinese medicine, right? Traditional yes. Chinese yes. medicine, they yeah. have such kind of treatment. Yeah. So I think, you know, in this case, did you think it's a mechanic, you know, stimulation or electrical stimulation or heat stimulation? So I think, you know, yeah, we use, yeah. yeah, many, many kind of stimulations. So did you, can you comment on this? Use, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So is that possible to get all this together to enhance the stimulation? <laughs> yeah, yeah, wonderful question. So actually, uh, Chinese medication, uh, so uh, like the applying the strain the, the with the needle something. Mm. So yeah, like, so the, uh, with uh, the how to say uh, the needle simulations may induce electrical charge because uh, I think that this is the private opinion. Uh, so the uh, the our human body is kind of the piezoelectric material, mm -hmm. so we we can have uh, a lot of polarization the inside the body, uh, so especially the skin is insulator. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the most of uh, the nerve stimulation are based on electrical stimulation. So but that's why I'm very interested in the Chinese medicine. So how to they collaborate with uh, the, the Chinese uh, the medication, uh, the scientist. So, but actually but the Chinese medication, Korean traditional medication. So actually Korean traditional medication, they came from the China, mm -hmm. actually same mechanism. Uh, but yeah. uh, there are a lot of unclear the mechanisms. Yeah. So for- well, I think they combine a lot of not electronics, right? And not yeah. electric stimulation. They use mechanics yeah. and heating, right? Sometimes yeah. it's heat. So I think it's a possible, you know, in the future, which, you know, we can, you know, uh, investigate these kind of things. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Actually, the mechanical stimulation, uh, I'll say the may good for the muscle relaxation, mm -hmm. but electrical stimulation is very good for the nerve stimulation. Mm -hmm. It looks a little bit different, uh, but so electrical stimulation uh, could be uh, for good for a very sharp therapy uh, to point this uh, treatment, point by point of treatment. So, yeah, it's very tough too <laughs> to tell you so, the width, okay, yeah. uh, so the, with the weird that, that's, a, that's our panel discussion. I think, yeah. you know, we're open for all, all kinds of questions, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Good comment. Yeah. Good yeah. questions. Thank you. As, uh, uh, yeah, for brainstorming, yeah, we yeah. can, you know, uh, think us from different side. Yeah. So time fly. Yeah. So uh, yes, time flies. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. You yeah, have such a wonderful panel and such a wonderful talk. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, all of you. Yeah. Thank um, you. Oh, so sorry. Why I got this page? I think I should got this page. Hi, San Wu. Yeah. Normally, uh, on the conference, I should you know cross the stage to give you the certification of your uh. talk. But yeah. this time, we'll have to deliver this electronic version to you. So really yeah, proud of you. Yeah, also, uh, yeah, nice, nice work and uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, stimulation for me, you know, <laughs> yeah. hard work and uh, uh, she be productive and she, you know, also uh, good, you know, go ahead, ahead, every time changing my slides. Yeah, I have to remind myself this. Yeah, so thank, thank you, you Sam, yeah, for your wonderful talk. I will send this electronic uh, version to you and uh, hope you'll come back to ICAX Talks again. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Alice. Thank yeah. you all. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, great. Yeah, next week we're going to have uh, Professor Gong Jianping as uh, from Hokkaido University, Japan. Uh, she is the founder of the Hydrogel. Yeah, with a high, you know, um, strong sense. Uh, so next week, she is going to talk about bio-inspired soft materials, challenges and opportunities. We have a very strong panel too. I think we will have a 
a great discussion on this uh, very hot topic, the soft materials. I hope all of you can stay on the line to listen to next week's talk. So uh, in this weekend, we have our IKX open as a, a young girl to talk about how to study math to your high school students. And this weekend, Sunday, we will have our uh, Light Doctoral Academic League. This is for the PhD students. I think everyone will enjoy this. And uh, uh, next month, we have IKX Summit yeah, in Wuhan. I hope we can go together to enjoy talks and enjoy the brainstorming. Yeah, thank you all of you. i see you next week.